everyone today's art journal prompt is inches this was requested by Jackie Elliott after watching one of my previous inchy videos I want to create my backgrounds using chalk mists these are cosmic shimmer chalk mists and I got these on clearance a few months back now um, $1.99 each I don't know whether I would recommend them things are usually on clearance for a reason this is the same company that I got my radiant rain sprays from and of course you know that I've had loads of clogging issues with those the blue has clogged um, but I have been able to rinse it under the tap and get it going again but you if you want to do this kind of thing if you watch this video and love the effect that I've got here you'd get a very very similar uh, effect using distress oxide certainly distress inks um, I've done this kind of background with dilution sprays you just need to be careful about which colors you mix together because you'll you'll see as I talk you through this if you're not careful you'll end up with mud let me just show you what I've got so far I've used these colors in pairs this was the blue and the green and what I love about these mists is that you get um, a really cool marbling effect and it also crazes as well you get sort of a really cool crackle effect and <laughs> loads of you know the problems that I've had trying to get a crackle effect in the past and <laughs> if I'd have used these it would have done it automatically all the time so that was blue and green and I just think that's lovely that looks um, like a page out of an atlas to me I just love that this was pink and purple and the crackle effect shows up really clearly on this I'm going to do a sample page for you in a minute and I'll show you how I how I got this um, this one was the blue and the purple together they come up much darker than you would think if you look at the bottles here um, they dry and turn out much darker than you would expect them to but that's fine I'm happy with that because I'm going to add more to these pages anyway and we can lighten it up a bit but again you can see the gorgeous crazing and marbling that, that goes on this looks as if it's had loads of alcohol um, thrown at it but it hasn't it's just it's separates and and reacts as you'll you'll see when I show you this one here is the pink and the orange and I had to work on this quite a lot because these colors didn't go as well together as I thought they would the orange isn't quite as bright orange as it looks in in the bottle and goes sort of more of a rustic brown color but by spraying more and more on top I was able to um, you know rescue it and I, I just love how those look now I've decided to use the pink and the blue and I'm working on a piece of cereal box so I've sanded down the front of the cereal box and then I've added two coats of gesso just to give it some grip. You can still see the pattern underneath, um, but that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to add, oh, don't clog on me now. Come on. that's the effect that I've achieved and you can see all of this gorgeous crazing and that's all I did with all of the previous pages I just love that now these are the backgrounds that I've got I couldn't stop I ended up doing a green and orange one as well so I've got the green and orange blue and green orange and pink pink and purple I think that's pink oh yes pink and blue and purple and blue and I just love all of those so I'm going to take one of these pages and I am going to stamp on it I've got a range of all different types of um, stays on inks I've got several different colors I've also got um, an opaque cotton white I've also grabbed a stash of background stamps I've got script I've got dictionary play uh, pages I've got bubbles I've got this oriental one here which I thought would be quite cute and another script stamp and I'm just going to stamp on one of these and I'm going to work tone on tone
this is how this piece looks now let me just hold it up close and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other pages using the same stamps just to keep continuity but I'll just change the colours um, accordingly so that I've got tone on tone on each piece now these are the backgrounds after they've been stamped and you can see that I've used the same stamps on all of these pages. I've just changed the colours that's all and I've worked tone on tone. So for instance the background on this one was green and blue and so I've used inks in green and blue and a bit of white as well and they're all the same. I've grabbed out whatever stamp pads I had in coordinating colours. This one here I've used some of the Distress Oxides in pink and orange. I've also used a bit of purple as well because um, it turned to purple in, in the background. Just absolutely love how that looks. And all I'm going to do now is I want to add a little bit of white to these, a little bit of white splatter just to lighten it and bring it together all the more. So I'm just going to grab a fan brush and I'm going to just be using some Dr. PH Martin's Pen White ink. So let me just set myself up. I'm just going to put, um, give it a shake. I'm just going to put a little bit of the ink on my mat here it's already runny so I don't need to water it down and I've just got my fan brush in fact actually I might need a tad of water bear with me let's just reach up and, and grab some let's just water that down just very very slightly there we go and I'm just going to add some splatter and I like this pen white ink because it's very opaque now I'm going to be working with these papers here. These are some of the papers that I received from Kathy in my Happy Mail um, a couple of weeks ago. So I've got these pieces of corrugated cardboard here and the colours just work perfectly with the backgrounds that I've made. Let me just bring those in. So, I mean, you can see that they just work really well. I've also got these papers here that Kathy sent me. I may or may not use some of those as well. I don't know. And I've also got these glitter papers that Linda Cooper Pierce sent me in Happy Mail as well and again the colours of those are just perfect for the backgrounds so I'm going to set these aside to make sure that these are dried properly they've all been splattered I've dried them with my heat tool but they're still a little bit tacky so I'm going to put those to one side before I cut them up and concentrate on my embellishments so I'm going to grab a couple of things and then I'll be back now I've cut various shapes using some dies that I've got here. Um, some are the ones that Know It sent me in Happy Mail, some I already had. I've got various dies that I've used there and I've also used some of these small punches as well. I've got a large heart one that I've used, a little dragon fly, small heart leaf, various flowers and some small circles. I've got a larger circle one somewhere. I'm in a right mess. And I've cut out, as I say, a load of shapes. And so now what I want to do is go and cut my pieces of paper, which are now dry. I just love the way that these look. So there they are. The splattering is all dry. And I'm going to cut these into two inch squares, one inch, inch squares one and a half by one and a half inch and one by one and a half inch and as soon as I've done that I'll be so back. I've cut out my inches and I just love how these turn into miniature works of art. Just look at these, aren't they gorgeous? I just love them. And it's important to choose stamps as well with small detail, quite dense detail, because otherwise by the time you've cut them down into these small pieces, you just wouldn't be able to um, see them. I just love those. And then this is the part that for me will take the time because now what I want to do is marry the embellishments up to these inches. And I want to sort of try and introduce as well um, a multitude of different textures. So for instance, here I've got the glitter heart, um, flower background and then I've got the corrugated card circle center um, here I've got the corrugated heart um, and the pearlized silver dragonfly and so I'm just try, going to try and sort of mix things up a bit so that I've got lots of different textures but still sticking with that tone on tone theme now I've been fiddling about I cut my inches in fact what I decided on was two by two inch two by one and a half inch and one inch by by one inch and that fits nicely onto the size of my page and I've just fiddled and fiddled and fiddled about with the colourways until it's pleasing to my eye. Now you all know that I like my bright colours and this I know isn't for everybody but I think by the time I've inked around the edges um, it will just pull all of this together. I need to draw in a stem on this one here. I've just freehand cut my little leaves like that so I need to glue all my components together now 
now and ink around the edges and I shall ink around the edge of all of these I shall ink around the edge of the individual components as well as the um, ink at uh, the edges of the inches I just want to show you what a difference it makes when you ink around the edge I know you hear me harp on about this all the time I've done the top two and the bottom right hand corner and just look what a difference it makes so let me just do this one for you and I'll show you so that's what it looks like before I've inked it and it just brings your piece together I'm not sure whether I'm going to mount these on black paper or whether I shall choose something completely different I don't know once they're, they're all glued together and, and inked I'll have a play around and see see what it all looks like let me just do the leaf so that's the background let me just do the the leaf it just makes them stand out more and just everything makes everything look just so much more cohesive there we go there's the leaf oh whoops a daisy and then I should just do the clover now if some are a bit fiddly just use the corner of your little makeup sponge just to get into the nooks and crannies it just makes it a bit a bit easier otherwise it's just a, a tad fiddly and so that's how that looks now so I'm going to continue to finish them all off and then we'll decide what background we're going to put them on. Now my pieces are all glued down and I'm ready to mount them and I just can't decide what I want to mount them on. That's what they look like on the black cardstock. I've also got some craft paper here um, and I don't know there's something that just isn't working for me so I've got a harebrained idea and you might think oh my goodness me Nina whatever are you doing um, this could all go horribly wrong but I've just got to try it I've dug out some distress oxides in black soot and iced spruce <laughs> And I'm going to do a mixed media background, so I'm going to put this on to fast forward for you. looking after several layers of the black soot and the ice spruce and I just love that I just think that just looks gorgeous but am I finished here no 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 I'm going to repeat what I did for the backgrounds of all the inches so I'm going to start off using my stays on opaque cotton white and my bubble stencil and I'm just going to add loads of interest just using the same stamps that I've used on the inches in the background and again I shall put this on to fast forward for you
happy with that background. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I've resisted the urge to put any of the white splatters. I don't know. I just think that might be one step too far. <laughs> I just hope my inches work with this. We, we shall see. We can always scrap it and go back to black um, if it um, fails. I'm going to use some of the black soot now just to add a border. I just love how this looks. I just think, um, well, you probably thought I'd gone stark raving mad when you saw me doing it, but I don't know. I just had a, a feeling. And I can always use it as a background for another journal page if it doesn't work with the, with the inches. I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know. It's going to be a surprise for me too, but I've got a feeling it might. Now for the moment of truth. That's how they look on the black background. I mean, they stand out, they work really well, but let's try it um, on the new background. Oh, I just love that. That is gorgeous. Please, please, please work. Let's have a look. Oh. <laughs> I just think this background is so dramatic and because I've repeated the pattern that we've got going on in the background already, I think that works. That to me looks boring, that looks dramatic, so I'm going to stick with this one. Um, right, okay, I'm off to glue things down and um, I don't know whether I'm going to use a quote this week or not, I'm going to have a look. Anyway, as soon as I've glued it into my journal, I'll be back. And so here's my finished page. I am thrilled to bits with this. I just think it's beautiful. I just love that black background. I just think it sets off the colour in the inches beautifully. It just sort of, you know, tones everything down, adds interest. I, <laughs> I just love it. Um, I've got loads left over as well. I've got these pieces left over from um, the cards that I cut. So those are big enough for tags or um, ATCs, whatever I want to do. I've got a whole heap of the inches as well, so I can carry on having fun and making more. Um, I've got a whole heap of embellishments left over as well to decorate them with. Um, now, I just want to show you this. This is another idea for you. This um, is a page of inches that I did for mixed media morsels going back. Oh, goodness me. This was one of the first pages I did. It's got to be at least 18 months ago. Um, and it's one of my decorated backgrounds. And then I just made loads of shapes out of craft wire um, I formed these with my jewelry tools um, and I just absolutely love those so you can make this as complicated or as easy as you like um, if you've got any small stamps as well these are absolutely perfect for using for inches uh, let's have a look we've got this owl here and these just fit perfectly onto um, an inchy page we've got a flower here so you know I could have done a background and then I could have maybe embossed these I'm going to try inches again I've also got some little wooden embellishments um, Linda Cooper Pierce sent me these as well in Happy Mail and I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use all the different card stocks or whether I wanted um, to use these so I think these are great for inches and I'll save those for another day so so look uh, on Pinterest as well for more ideas. Also, you know, search search YouTube. There's loads and loads and loads of ideas for, 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 for inches. So I look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to create for this week's prompt. I hope you like this page. And, you know, as always, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up because it really does let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing. And let me know what you think in the comments below. So take care, everyone. See you all again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.